biblical tithing. You can't do it, according to the scriptures. Hello and welcome to In Your Bible. I'm your host, George W. Green. You cannot tithe according to the scriptures. I put tithe in quotations because what we're doing is really not tithing. For those who are giving 10%, you're really not tithing. You might be giving 10%, but that's not tithing according to how the Bible defines tithing. I'm telling you, it's impossible to tithe according to the scriptures. So what has happened is that preachers preach a different version of tithing. I'm telling you, God made the tithing issue very clear. The scriptures clear, uh, clearly state who, what, when, where, how, and why tithes are to be paid. You and I are not in the group God clearly identified for paying tithes. Uh, I've published two video series with each video, video lasting about 28 minutes. The first series I produce is a 10-part series, The Truth About Tithing. Um, I eventually realized that it had a lot more detail than most folks were interested in, so then I produced a very fast-moving three-part series titled No More Tithing. Links will be in the description. In this teaching, all I want to do is prove to you that we do not qualify as tithe payers. I'm only going to visit three scriptures. Yes, that's all that's, all that's needed for me to prove my point. Many churchgoers constantly hear how God requires a tithe. The tithe is always defined as 10% of your income or of your increase, but I'm telling you, that's not how God defined it. Surprise? Yeah, 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 you should be surprised. God goes on to tell those under the law of Moses, we are not under the law of Moses, exactly how tithing works. All Israelites were not required to tithe. So stay with me and learn how God defines tithing. Here are the requirements for one of the tithes under the law of Moses. Yes, there multiple tithes were required. At this point, I'm only talking about the Levitical tithe, which had two different parts. Okay, The Levitical tithe included tithes from Israelites that planted food to eat, and Israelites who raised animals to eat. Here's the first part. It's in your Bible in uh, Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. The Bible means what it says. Seed of the land or fruit of the trees. Okay? The verse is speaking to Israelites that work the land, farmers, okay, in the promised land, okay? All Israelites did not farm or raise animals for a living. Oh yeah, and God never required tithes from poor folks. Never required tithes from poor folks. Uh, this is important. Listen to this. Prior to this law, a tithe only meant one-tenth of anything for any reason. But God changed the definition of tithe, but only, but only when it came to tithing in support of the tabernacle. This tenth of the food grown was different now. Since it was in support of the tabernacle, it became holy to the Lord. Let's look at the second part of the Levitical tithe, and that's uh, Skip one verse, Leviticus 27, 32. And every tithe of herds and flocks, every tenth animal that shall pass under the herdman's staff shall be holy to the Lord. As already said, tithes were always food, either produce from the promised land, things that grow, okay, where the farmer, where the farmer had planted the seeds, okay, or they raised animals, but just in the promised land. 
We would call people that raise animals either ranchers, herders, or farmers. It, it really doesn't matter what we call them. This part of the Levitical tithe was only addressed to Israelites that raised animals within the Promised Land and owned at least 10 animals. Money tithes were never given. Did you hear that? Money tithes were never given. Now, there is one exception. Uh, you would have to pay a money as a penalty if you redeemed your tithes, okay? But that has nothing to do with us, so let's move on. There is no verse in the Bible where it allows New Covenant church leaders to change tithing food in the Promised Land to tithing money from any place in the world. There's no verse that says it's okay to change that. It's not in, it's not in your Bible, okay? Uh, I'll speak about offerings in my next video. So, I'm done. I've proved my point. You and I are not qualified to pay tithes. Uh, but let me point this out for you too. Our religious leaders also are not qualified to receive tithes. Yeah, think about that. Um, we're still in the same chapter of Leviticus, uh, um, chapter 27. Now we're going to go to verse 34. It says right there, These are the commands the Lord gave Moses at Mount Sinai for the Israelites. How about that? Verse 34 tells us clearly who these instructions are for. For the people of Israel. Uh, by the way, that law is not just talking about the law of tithing, but we're not going to get into that now. So, I'm telling you, case closed. Biblical tithing is not required for believers under the New Covenant. So, you want to give your church 10%? You can do that if you want. It's not biblical tithing, okay? But you can do it if you want. The promises of tithing are also not for us. Yeah. But the reverse side, you got to look at the other side of the issue. Uh, you also don't come under a curse. You don't come under a curse from God for not tithing. Okay? The bottom line, you are free from the law of tithing. Thank you for watching.